at the economic forecast that you put together. Uh, what would be sort of the, uh, the overarching conclusion that uh, you reached from? The overarching conclusion is the, as the data shows, okay, the data indicates the valley economy is stronger than many think. Uh, the data is indicating that this year there is more reason to be less pessimistic than last year because all these indicators, despite the gradual uh, and slow uh, improvement, they are on the right direction. We are moving in the right direction. Most of us would like to see a, a faster movement, uh, and, but that's not happening. But at least we're in the right direction, uh, and the data is supporting that that uh, the valley is in a relatively stronger state now than in a couple of years before. So if you do these year-to-year -year comparisons of rates of changes rather than month-to-month -month short term comparisons, you get a more accurate picture of what is really happening in this economy. Now doing it year-to-year -year like that, is that pretty unusual really? No, it's very common. You only, Not only you look at levels of the series, but look at the rates of change, meaning the change over the previous year. Uh, and that is more telling of what's happening uh, in an economy than by just looking at levels. The, uh, were there some conclusions that you drew or some things that you found surprising about how the economy is, is faring? Yes, there were certain sectors like leisure and hospitality services, employment, okay. uh, wholesale okay. trade employment, okay. and non rurals are showing uh, positive growth in the nine-month period in 2011. And those are expected to extend into 2012, provided that the same dynamics uh, continues to exist. But once we, com you know, when we compare these to their benchmarks, the natural rates that have existed over the past 10 years, the comparable rate of existence of these series, we see that they are on their route to catching these uh, rates. Uh, and those rates are consistent with the state, state uh, performance healthy performance of the economy. Looking back on how you put together the idea of uh, putting this forecast together, are you using some uh, techniques that are, that, are, that are new or different? Yes, we're using a new technique. In fact, the economist that was behind uh, these types of models won the Nobel Prize this year. Christopher Sims uh, won the Nobel Prize for his contributions in econometrics, and his and some other individuals are behind the Bayesian vector autoregression model, which does a very good job uh, amongst the competing models of accurately forecasting uh, incoming values and accurately predicting the turning points. The, you know, the advantage of these models is they do an excellent job of predicting turning points. And that's why uh, we've chosen to use this model. It lets the data speak for itself. It's data-driven, facts-based. Based. It introduces minimal restrictions uh, in, in terms of how the model is uh, behaving. Uh, so it, it, it lets, pretty much as I said earlier, it lets the data speak for itself. Is there a way to compare it with the data that you usually it? Uh, well, I, uh, you mean compared with uh, against other models? Yes. Yeah, I, I do have a, a, a published article in that, in the Annals of Regional Science. Uh, the title is Forecasting Employment Figures in Southern California. There we compare the Excellent forecasting start. performance of the, you know, these kind of models based in Victor VVAR models, Victor Audition models, with the competing models, structural models, autoregressive integrated moving average models, uh, moving average models per se. Uh, uh, and even random walk models, uh, and then the results show that the out-of-sample forecasting accuracy of these Bayes and Mar models are superior to all these competing models. And it has been evidenced uh, more, uh, over and over again in the literature convincing them that these models uh, do, be uh, do a better job in terms of forecasting accuracy. Now, the local business leaders, how will they be able to use the information that you put together? Well, there's a lot of confusion out there. I mean, one day you see the same articles appear, one is pessimistic, saying we're doomed, the other one saying, hey, look, they're improving. So even on the part of uh, news, you know, our, you know, the reporters, investors, consumers, there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of pessimism for the right reasons. Uh, I'm hoping, I mean, this 
forecasting report is hoping to shed some light into that confusion, eliminate the uncertainty, and uh, you know, allow businessmen alike to make more informed decisions. Because after all, a forecasting uh, model is a decision-making tool. You, know, you look at what the data is saying, you have your own opinions as to what's going to happen, you combine the two and you make a more informed decision. That's all we're really saying here. Mm -hmm. But you do see a very practical use for the information. Well, there is a practical use. I mean, companies do that, right? They have their benchmark, and then they beat their benchmark earnings, stock prices go up. Uh, so that's why we use benchmarks like the long-run average growth rate, the natural rate. How is the variable doing relative to its benchmark? And it's showing that even though they're lower than the benchmark, mostly it's there, they're on their route to catching those uh, benchmarks. And uh, now one interesting thing that you said as well was the fact that you can look at it and you can either be optimistic or pessimistic, and you said, no, you can't. You have to be optimistic. Particularly at this time, you know, there's no room for pessimism because it's going to lead to the self-fulfilling prophecy of making things even worse. Are we going to vary ourselves into another recession, right? It's going to contribute to that. So this is the time to be relatively optimistic. But, of course, at the other time, you don't want to look like a fool thinking that everything is okay. That's not what I'm saying. But look at the data and then make up your mind, uh, you know, do not believe everything you hear in the news, read in the news, but instead look at these objective um, forecasts done by third parties. I mean, I've seen, you know, individuals give forecasting uh, conferences where they give their own opinions, but they're a representative of a bank. How objective can that be? Whereas ours is, you know, done by this school, and it's objective, it's using a statistical model, it's using past data, it's facts you know, driven, numbers driven, and whatever is coming out of those numbers is, is uh, reported. Some sectors are doing worse, other sectors are doing better, but overall the total employment appears to be on its track to catch its, what it was doing in over a 10 year period. Would you say that might be the most optimistic it, it definitely, I would say there's grounds to be less pessimistic. Mm -hmm. okay? I mean, if you're going to look at it that way, uh, in a, if, uh, two, a year ago, as the numbers show, the negative values were much more pronounced, and now they're a lot less. So, again, uh, very strong evidence out there to be less pessimistic this year than last year. If you have to be pessimistic, well, then be, come look at the numbers. Uh, become less pessimistic. A lot of frustrated people there, unemployed people. I cannot find a job. How can you talk about things getting mover? mover? Yes, that's true. Things are not moving as fast as one would like, but at least they're moving in the right direction in a slow but steady manner. It won't uh, really be solved, however, in your opinion, until the banks actually start loaning again? I think, yeah, that's the general consensus. Maybe nobody's applying for loans. That might be true. We are not extending loans because there's no demand due to the you know, low credit ratings. But at some, you know, we need to find a way to overcome this you know, new regulation and start extending loans. I think that's the critical component because the bank deposits, banks are flooded with cash, as you saw uh, in the report. Net loans and leases are going down. Uh, there's an anomaly there uh, that needs to be addressed. And uh, coming away, if uh, business leaders here in the community would come away with one important point of this particular economic forecast, what would that be? Again, it, I think the point would be look at the numbers. The valley appears to be stronger than what many think. Uh, therefore, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty out there. But no, indicators are moving in the right direction. I don't think there is um, any reason to be more afraid this year than last year. Uh, you know, be less afraid to hire, be less afraid to extend loans uh, to get this going uh, and start shifting gears, right? shift to the second year. I think the economy is ready to do that, provided the same dynamic prevails. Okay. All right, great. Okay. Great. Anything else you wanted to? Well, that's pretty much. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Thank you very much.